Welcome to week one, video three of the SAS Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to learn about data steps and procedures within SAS, and we are going to do all of this within the SAS Studio environment, and I'm not going to switch back and forth between my desktop SAS and SAS Studio. All right, so data steps and procedures are the two primary tools that we will be using within SAS. As a SAS programmer, those are like your left and right hand. Basically, everything you do within SAS is going to be either with a data step or with a procedure step, which is shortened to PROC or a PROC. Uh, a data step is, is essential for manipulating data. Data steps can be used for creating new data sets. They can be used for managing data. They can do things such as add new rows, new variables, new columns. They can also be used to merge rows and columns and do all sorts of data manipulation. So it's a very fundamental part of SAS. The second part of SAS is a procedure. A SAS procedure is like a pre-programmed function. SAS has created hundreds and thousands of these functions that are already programmed into SAS that we can utilize in order to run certain functions on our pre-existing data sets. We saw an example earlier when we ran the contents procedure in order to explore a new data set and to see what its contents were. Similarly, pr procedures uh, in SAS include so many different types of things, everything from calculating percentages, means, running sophisticated statistical programs, so on and so forth. Um, usually, procedures within SAS are associated with an output because they're running a certain function on a data set. And data steps are not associated with an output, but that is a rule of thumb. And as you will see over the course of this bootcamp, that's not always true. There are going to be some exceptions to these rules. Now, let's go ahead and run, uh, run a data step. And then we'll see what the structure of a data step is. And then we'll also run a procedure. And then we'll talk about what these things are doing. As we do these things, I will share, you with, share with you all why I love SAS more so than many other software, statistical software programs I've used in the past. So let's begin with the data step. Now, we've already seen an example of a procedure, a proc contents procedure that we ran earlier. Uh, and you will know that proc contents ends with a run statement. Every proc contents has to have a run statement. That run statement is actually not just specific to proc contents. It's also available in every single procedure and every single data step. So any data step, and I'm going to program this in front of you guys here, any data step that you use in SAS has three minimum statements. The first statement is a data statement. Uh, it literally begins with data. And at the end of that word, you basically type a space and you type in the name of a new file that you want to create. I'm just going to call this new file. And I'm going to end with a semicolon. The second statement in a data step is a set statement. The set statement tells SAS what is the data set that it should work with in order to create the file, new file, right? So the data set that we are interested in is the site data set that I showed you guys in an earlier video. It's located in the library called class. Uh, you will see that I've written library name for class here. This is actually the permanent library name for, um, for this bootcamp. So all of the files for this bootcamp, all of the program files, all of the data sets will actually be located within this lib name. And every single SAS program we will work on in this bootcamp will begin with that lib name. Uh, within that class, boot, uh, class library, we have the file called psych. So I'm going to write that as a second data set. And I will conclude with my last data set, a run step. Now, if we were doing a, uh, a data step which was actually manipulating data sets, we would actually write several more pieces of code between the set step and the run step. But for now, all I want to do is I want to take my data set named class.site, which is the site data set in the class library, and I'm going to create a new data set with it called new file. And it's going to be the same exact data set. I'm not manipulating the data set. I'm not changing anything. I'm just taking an existing data set. I'm creating a copy of it. I'm calling it new file, all right? Now, before I run this piece of code, I wanna tell you guys the reason I love SAS. As you see here, every single data step, and data steps are how you manipulate databases within SAS, every single data step has to have a data, a set, and a run statement, which means that every time you manipulate a data set, you have to create a new file or a new version of that data set. Here, we are basically just copying the data set. But let's say you are creating a new variable. Let's say you are working in Excel. You've got two columns with numbers in them, and you're creating a third column, which basically is an average of the previous two columns. And you might do that using a formula right, within Excel. When you do that, you're basically overwriting that Excel file and adding a column there. Right? So this 
nature of adding things to existing files is basically a mainstay in every statistical software. It's in Excel, obviously. It's in SPSS. It's also in um, Stata, and as far as I understand, also in R. While you can create new copies of your data, basically version control, in all of these statistical software, in SAS, you are almost required to do it. Now, there are ways you can work around to avoid doing that, but what SAS makes you do is version control on steroids, which means every single time you make a tiny, tiny little change to a data set, whether that is renaming a variable, whether that is um, uh, sorting a data set, whether that is uh, adding a new column, adding a new row, whatever you do, the output data set will be saved in a new file. So you have very rigorous version control. For every single step, you can go back to a previous version of the database to see what it looks like. And you know every single thing that is being done to the data, which is ultimate version control, right? And I think it ends, uh, it lends some transparency to SAS, which I quite frankly, absolutely love. And I have not seen in any of the other statistical softwares that I've used. Now, uh, let me go ahead and run this uh, data set. Let me execute it and we can see what it does. Before I execute it, uh, I want to show you guys that this file that I'm looking at right here is the week one code. This will be available within your class uh, SAS Studio library. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these comments I've written up ahead. You're welcome to pause the video and read them. You're welcome to read them on your own time later. They are primarily intended for you to recap some of the things we've covered this week. Uh, so you can read them on your own. But these are things I've already mentioned to you in one way or the other. What I'm going to do before I start running anything is I'm going to execute my lib name statement. That's the first thing you need to do anytime you enter into SAS. You, you look at your log, make sure it was successfully assigned. And if it was, then we move on. Uh, this is the proc contents procedure I showed you in an earlier video. I'm not going to run that for now. I'm just going to select these three steps for our data step. I'm going to hit run. And, and SAS Studio actually skips a few steps. I would like to backtrack and show you guys every single tab. So we ran in the code tab. Next, we look in the log tab to see what happened. So the, here is the code that I ran, the data step, the, the data set, data set and run statements. And the notes here, the notes basically show that it ran well. It shows that there were 50 observations read from the data set class.psych. The data set work.new file has 50 observations and five variables. Now, the way this works is that you can actually look at your output within this output data. And this output data tab is actually exclusive to SAS Studio and it does not exist within regular SAS. Uh, it's basically a preview of the new file we've created. Let me go, go ahead and open the old file we were working on so we can see what changes may be present between that file and this file. So if I double click uh, within, if I go to my libraries on the left here, go to my class library, which I had just created, there's the psych file that we've been looking at since the beginning of week one. Um, this is what the psych file looks like. There are these five variables listed on the left here and you can look through them right here. There are 50 rows and you can scroll to the very right here. You can scroll back to the top. This is what the data set looks like. If I go back to my week one tab, look at the output data. The preview I get of this data set I, new cre I created just now, the one called new file, it says that right here, uh, is exactly the same. So we didn't change the data set, we just created a new version of the data set. Uh, and this is where you can view it. You can go back to your code and you can see that we had created a new file and that was the file we just looked at. Well, so, so this preview that we just got within the output data tab is fancy, it's nice, I like it. But what if you actually wanted to open the data set yourself, right? If you wanted to open the data set yourself, then you navigate to a library named work. Work is a pre-existing library. Every time you boot up SAS or SAS Studio, the work library is already in place. The work library is a temporary library. If you open that, and we'll see what it means to be temporary in a second, but if you open that library, you'll see a new file, the file we just created, and you can double click it, and there's your file. So as you run code, you can get these previews of the output data set within the output tab of your code, but you can also go back to your library, open it and actually look at the data set. And I wanted to show this difference to you guys because once you are programming uh, on real data sets and once you're working on your research projects, you might not be working within SAS Studio, you might be working within real SAS. And if you are doing that, then you actually need to open the data set. 
directly from your libraries in order to look at it. There is no preview output tab feature within SAS. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's talk a little more about this new file. This new file that we just created automatically got served to the work library, not the class library. This is a little different. If you're used to working within, let's say M plus, if you're used to working within Stata, this is not something that you're used to. Every new file you're creating in SAS automatically gets served to the work library because that is the default library. This default library is also a temporary library. What that means is that if I close SAS, if I sign out of this program right here, and if I, if I reboot, if I re relaunch SAS Studio, this new file will be automatically deleted. And that may be okay, right? Because everything I've done to create new file is written in code and the code won't get deleted. And I can just rerun the code and get my output file again. Uh, but the new file itself will be deleted. Now, any permanent library in SAS, permanent libraries are SAS uh, like user created libraries, like the one we just created with this piece of code named class. This is a permanent library and permanent libraries in SAS will not delete files when you close SAS up. So this class library has a file site if I were to close SAS and reopen it, that file would still be there, but this one called new file will not be there anymore, right? Uh, so you need to decide which files you want to hold on to when you close SAS and which files you don't want to hold on to. As you're working on research project, which involves thousands of lines of code, you may have to make decisions about when you want to save files to a permanent library and when you just want to leave files in a temporary library. And you want to use both of those judiciously because like I said, SAS has version control up on steroids, right? You will create new files over new files over new files every single time you write a data step. So you don't necessarily want to save every single thing to a permanent library, but it is helpful to save some things to a permanent library. And we can talk about what, uh, how you make that decision later, uh, later in this bootcamp. Okay, so I've told you guys that every new file you've created automatically gets saved to the work library. But if you actually want to not use the default, you can change that. You can change it by actually specifying what library you want to save it to. For example, you can type in class.new file. And if I run this piece of code, it will actually save the new file to the permanent library called class. And I'm going to show you guys how this works just now. I select all of this and run. You'll see here in my log that it ran just fine. There are just notes, no errors or warnings for me. My output data gives me a preview. I can go back to my code and open my libraries, go to the class library, and you'll see here, new file is now within class. Now there is also a new file within work because we earlier ran a data set which created that new file in the work library, but we just created the library within the class, the new file data set within the class library, and that's right there. So if I were to close SAS now and open it back up, that file will still be here. Now, uh, it's okay to use work temporary libraries for most of your regular SAS processing. As long as you've got code that gives you that data set, you don't have to save the output data set. All you need is the input data set and then the piece of code that gets you there. But a very, very good rule of thumb, and this is part of programming etiquette that I'm going to try and show you guys as we go along this coursework, is to not let SAS do that on its own. Instead, I want you guys to write work.new file. I want you to explicitly mention that the file you're creating is going to be in the work library. Now, SAS does that by default even if you don't mention it, but mentioning it in there makes your code a little more transparent, a little more easy to understand. So when somebody sees your code, they know that this file is going to be in the work library when they need it. Um, that is all I have for you for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.